American Medical Association. This is a disease which is an impairment of the normal functioning of some aspects of the body, and this is clear in obesity, where we can find appetite dysregulation, abnormal energy ba uh, balance, endocrinal dysfunction, infertility sometimes, uh, nothing sometimes, and uh, most of the time there is dyslipidemia. Again, the American uh, Medical uh, Association said that um, the criteria of a disease involves characteristic signs or symptoms, and this is shown again in obesity with increased body fat, and symptoms associated with increased body fat lead, lead to joint pains, immobility, sleep apnea, and other complications like uh, depression, so, uh, uh, low so, uh, self-esteem, and other um, metabolic and psychological uh, complications. Um, also, a disease is characterized by uh, making a harm or morbidity, and this is again shown in obesity, uh, which leads usually to type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, osteoporosis, and polycystic ovary syndrome. Obesity is a complex and multifactorial disease characterized by usually increased energy intake and uh, less energy expenditure, so the balance between intake and expenditure is lost. There is increased intake and reduced energy expenditure. And this is shown by signals from the adipose tissue, the pancreas and the gut, leading to increased food intake. And Environmental factors, including inactive lifestyle, smoking cessation, psychological factors. Sometimes there is genetic uh, background or genetic disease or taking medications leading to obesity and another input by the hedonic system or hedonic input where there is increased palatability or pleasure to certain high caloric uh, diets just for uh, pleasure, even in the absence of hunger sensation. Obesity is associated with uh, too many complications, up to 200 known complication or a disease associated with uh, obesity. These are either metabolic, mechanical, or mental, the metabolic uh, complications and comorbidities are the presence of certain cancers increased in case of obesity like uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, renal cell carcinoma, GIT carcinoma, breast carcinoma. Uh, many types of carcinoma are linked to obesity. Again, there is uh, asthma, uh, nuffled or muffled, uh, gold stones and gold bladder disease, infertility. Uh, increased incidence of uh, cerebrovascular disease and a risk factor for strokes for dyslipidemia, increased incidence of hypertension, coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, and pulmonary embolism. Other groups of metabolic disorder include gout and thrombosis, and of course, a definite relation with type 2 diabetes and prediabetes. Uh, those are some uh, mechanical uh, problems uh, and functional uh, problems uh, like stress incontinence, uh, arthrosis, uh, especially in the weight-bearing uh, joints, uh, sleep apnea, and chronic backache, and mental uh, and psychological complications in the form of depression and anxiety, Uh, what's the role of GLP-1 in appetite regulation? And we know that we have an endog endogenous GLP-1 uh, and uh, there is a homeostatic versus 
hedonic regulation of appetite, we, we need to understand both of them. The homeostatic regulation uh, acting to maintain body weight by regulation uh, by uh, peptide hormones who can induce hunger or satiety. And of course, there is changes in energy expenditure according to the lifestyle, whether physical um, lifestyle, uh, physical work or uh, sedentary lifestyle. The hedonic regulation is uh, a form of reward uh, or a survival behavior, for example, uh, eating or uh, some uh, pleasures like uh, uh, sex. Uh, they operate even in the presence of satiety sig signals. If the uh, person is not hungry, he can go for uh, hedonic um, eating uh, for uh, just uh, pleasure. It can lead to food consumption beyond homeostatic needs, and it is linked to high calorie foods, um, especially sugary foods, uh, dessert or uh, fatty uh, foods. This is the endogenous GLP-1, uh, and GLP-1 is a peptide the form of 31 amino acids, and it is a member of the incretin family. But the GLP-1, the endogenous GLP-1, is rapidly uh, degraded by uh, GPP-4 inhibitor dipeptidyl peptidase, uh, sorry, dipeptidyl peptidase enzyme uh, during one to two minutes after it is secreted. And uh, it is secreted primarily from the L cells of the gut, but also the brain contains receptors for GLP-1 uh, and um, uh, secrete GLP-1. GLP-1, the endogenous one, is uh, released in response to food intake. According to this figure, we can uh, find that it is secreted in relation to meals. Um, the three uh, main meals, it is secreted. And it has a physiological action, but the physiological uh, level reduce a little bit hunger sensation in individuals with obesity. Now we come to an exogenous GLP-1 receptor agonist, which is liraglutide 3 milligram, and um, it is an analog to uh, human GLP-1 receptor agonist. Liraglutide is used once per day, and like we said, it's a human GLP-1 analog. Uh, and it uh, has 97% amino acid homology to human GLP-1. Um, uh, just um, change in the uh, fatty acid leading to improved pharmacokinetics, improving binding and prolonging the action of uh, this GLP-1 receptor agonist the half-life becomes 13 hour and it is resistant to DPP4 uh, degradation. The liraglutide uh, increases satiety and reduces hunger through neurons in the arcuate nucleus and the liraglutide affect GLP-1 receptor agonist present on the GAPA and also on POMC nucleus, leading to increased satiety, and on the arcuate nucleus, leading to reduction of hunger sensation. This is the effect of exogenous liraglutide 3 milligram affecting all dimensions of appetite, like we see here. It improves satiety, it uh, leads to sensation of fullness, it reduces hunger and there is reduction in uh, prospective food consumption. This is a mechanism of action for uh, weight loss of liraglutide, leading to loss of body fat mass, 
reduced energy intake. There is small increase in resting metabolic rate and there is reduced food craving and improvement uh, of the control of eating. Um, the liraglutide 3 milligram was studied uh, extensively on 6,000 cases, which uh, were studied in the SCALE program. And the SCALE program is the satiety and the clinical adiposity liraglutide evidence. Like we said, uh, 6,600 subjects were enrolled and we have now uh, different phases of the trial. And this uh, trial or these uh, cases studied the more than 6,000 cases showed uh, efficacy and uh, one of the scale program was uh, called scale obesity and prediabetes on more than 3,000 cases, which showed uh, marvelous effects on body weight reduction. There was reduction of 8% um, in the body weight after one year. Also, there was reduction of 80% of the risk of type 2 diabetes over three years in those patients with pre-diabetes. 70% of the subjects uh, were early responders based on the EMMA rules. The EMMA rules um, uh, determined that a loss of 5% of the body weight in the first three months, this happened in 67% uh, of cases of liraglutide uh, versus 22% uh, in the placebo group, which was not actually placebo, but uh, it was diet and exercise uh, given to all uh, the uh, 6,000 cases. This is a change in body weight. Uh, by the end of the first year, there was 11% reduction in the body weight in the group receiving uh, liraglutide versus 3.8% uh, body weight reduction in the group received uh, placebo or the compared group. Uh, when we see this uh, slide, we find that 88% of the patients, or they are not actually patients, but they lost more than 5% of body weight, but 55% of the early responders had achieved more than 10% of weight loss uh, at the end of one year. More than 15% of the body weight was lost in 24% of the cases. Then we know now that liraglutide is uh, successful in weight reduction, three milligram liraglutide, but what's beyond weight loss in liraglutide 3 milligram? Uh, there was 80% uh, relative risk reduction in developing uh, type 2 diabetes and reduction of uh, the incidence of new cases of uh, type 2 diabetes. And the group received liraglutide 3 milligram uh, in, the, in this group, they needed 2.7 years more to develop type 2 diabetes compared with the group who didn't receive liraglutide 3 milligram. And there was 80% risk reduction of developing type 2 diabetes after three years. 60% uh, of the subjects uh, of patients with prediabetes regressed to normal glycemia over time. And this effect uh, was shown even after 28 uh, weeks from the beginning, we uh, could find that 70% of cases uh, gained uh, normal glycemia after 28 weeks. There was other uh, beneficial actions on reduction of blood pressure on the systolic blood pressure, uh, there was a reduction of 4.2 millimeter mercury 
On the mean diastolic blood pressure, there was reduction of 2.6 millimeter mercury. This was the improvements in lipid profile. There was reduction in total cholesterol by 3.1% uh, uh, in LGL cholesterol 3%, improvement in HDL cholesterol 2.3%, very low density uh, lipoprotein uh, cholesterol uh, reduced by 13%, reduction of non-HDL cholesterol again, and reduction of triglycerides 13%. There was also improvement in cardiovascular biomarkers in the form of reduction of 37 milligram of a high sensitive C-reactive protein. Um, this uh, was uh, shown uh, uh, in, in the results here are very remarkable. Uh, in the scale program, there was 58% relative risk reduction in time to first mace for the group receiving gliraglutide 3 milligram versus all uh, comparators. And we can remember in the LEADER trial that uh, the primary outcome of LEADER trial showed that there was reduction 13% of cardiovascular deaths, non-fatal mycology infarction or non-fatal stroke. Then the GLP-1 receptor agonists have multifactorial effect. Uh, they may benefit several disease states. Uh, on uh, the NASH, they improve the inflammation in the liver, they reduce weight and reduce lipid and reduce uh, glucose level. On, on obesity, they uh, reduce fat intake, improvement in appetite, reduction of appetite, reduction of weight. On kidney disease, uh, reduction of inflammation and reduction of systolic blood pressure on cardiovascular disease, reduction of inflammation, reduction of dyslipidemia, improvement of systolic blood pressure, but there was increase in heart rate. On diabetes, uh, improvement in insulin secretion, improvement in beta cell function, reduction of glucagon secretion, and uh, reduction of gastric emptying or delaying gastric emptying. What about the safety of the liraglutide because it's now uh, three milligram instead of the previous concentration of 1.8 milligram. Uh, so the scale program showed safety uh, parameters for gastrointestinal adverse events. Uh, almost all events were mild or moderate. And there was zero uh, event of uh, medullary thyroid carcinoma. And there was no uh, neuropsychiatric uh, complications or side effects of liraglutide 3 milligram. And the cases who received liraglutide, uh, any uh, psychological or neurological uh, complication or um, side effect was similar versus placebo. Uh, these are the cases of uh, nausea. At the beginning, there was, uh, by the week four, there was 24% uh, nausea. Uh, at uh, week eight, there was improvement and only 14% complained of uh, nausea. But by the end of the first year, the nausea uh, percentage or prevalence reduced to 5%. And this no nausea can be uh, improved when giving some instruction to the patient to eat less and to eat slower and to drink plenty of water. Uh, let me introduce the pen. Uh, the pen is uh, having um, the same escalation of doses from 0.6 milligram after one week, 1.2 milligram, uh, 1.8 milligram after one week, um, the, four, uh, the third week, 2.4 milligram and ending with the therapeutic dose for obesity, which is 3 milligram. Thank you.